I thank God, you know, for what he placed me in. Um, you know, I did not uh, see this coming. I did not uh, expect to be a pastor at any church. Uh, when I became to the, came to the knowledge of God, I was just obedient to what God wanted out of me. And that's all I've done since I've been here in California. You know, it's just been obedient because when you see miracles, you see things happen, you know there is a God. And I always wonder why people backslide and turn their back because it's undeniable. It's undeniable. And I just thank, really thank God for this. I thank uh, God for my wife and the kids. They're, they couldn't be here today because they had a basketball game in uh, Los Angeles. So they're down there, but they're watching on Zoom. So, <laughs> so I know they're watching. My sermon today, the Lord gave it to me last night. And it's different, but uh, I'm going to be, be obedient in, in doing this one. I never know how it's going to come out. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you and pray. Lord God. Thank you for this day, Lord God. Lord, touch my mouth, Lord God. Let the words be true, Lord God, be from you, Lord God. I thank you and praise you, Lord God. Touch the congregation, Lord God. Let them hear your word, Lord God. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to go to Matthew 13 and 44. It states, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found and covered up, then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. I want to read that again. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found and covered up, then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And the title of the sermon is Hidden Treasure. When you come into the things of God, you sell all you have, and you grasp a hold of it. You grasp a hold of God. If you go to Genesis 37 and 3, I want to tell you this story. I want to make it clear. It's a story about Joseph. Genesis 37 and 3. It says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. Also, he made him a coat of many colors. But when his brothers saw that his, their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him, could not speak peaceably about him. Now, Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers. They hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. There will be a binding of sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose, also stood upright. Indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brother said to him, shall you, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Joseph was a special young man. God saw something special in him that only the, the natural eye couldn't see. His brothers didn't see it. His father didn't see it. But God saw it. That's why you're here and that's why you're listening because some special things are going to happen. Acts 2 and 17, in the last days it shall be. God declares that I will pour out my spirit of all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. There comes a time, well, let me, if you remember the time, that women couldn't teach men. Women couldn't be ministered. Women couldn't prophesy. 
All they wanted from women is to come and cook and sweep the flow and look pretty when they needed you to. That's why all they wanted from women. But I know you say the devil is a lie. I know most women will say that. <laughs> but times have changed. You have visions, you have dreams, the same as Joseph. You have expectations. You cannot help that God smiles down on you. You cannot help that God is blessing you. Joseph's father loved him just like God loves you. It's called favor. <laughs> Joseph had more than one dream. He said you have more than one dream. Ecclesiastes 5 and 7 said, but when dreams increase, word grows many. There is a vanity but God is the one you must fear. The man or woman that understands the fear of God becomes that hidden treasure. Hebrews 13 and 6 says, so we come boldly and say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Psalms 56 and 3 and 4 say, I'm, when I was afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, who's Word, I praise in God, I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? I want to make it clear. It's not man. It's not man. It's a God thing. You remember when your mother used to tell you, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. <laughs> well, it wasn't for a lack of trying. But John 15 and 16 say, you did not choose me. I chose you. I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should, should abide so that whatever you ask of the Father, it may be given to you. This is a God thing. God is moving. God is working. God has a hidden talent, a gift in you. Jo Joseph was chosen. Not for who he was, but what he was going to become. Because he didn't know it. Joseph was clay. He had to go through some things to be molded into the man that he was going to become to bring his brothers out. So age does not matter. You're never too old to reach out and bless someone. You're never too old to reach out and minister to someone. You're never too old to do the work of the Lord. You know, you might get tired because those old bones don't move the way they used to. But you say, you, you pray to God, touch right now in the name of Jesus. You plead the case. If Lord, if you want me to minister, then you got to take these aches and pains away. <laughs> Galatians 1 and 10 says, so as we walk in the manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every good work, increasing the word of knowledge. Yes, Joseph's father rebuked him for a dream. Joseph's brothers hated him. But if God is telling you that you're the head, not the tail, above and not beneath, and it, then the enemy is going to come after you because <laughs> you know who you are in Christ. <laughs> they wanted him dead they stripped him of his coat of many colors they tried to starve him and then they ended up selling him for 20 pieces of silver so what does that tell you the devil uses the closest person to you because they know how to push your button <laughs> I'm telling you you have to keep your friends close and your enemy close 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. It's who around you that will ruin you. But 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 even says, and I wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. They can be the perfect person in your eye. <laughs> in your eye. And I, I'll give you the testimony, but I'm going to give you detail now. Because everyone, I, I mentioned a testimony where I was going to leave San Jose Word of Faith. I'd only been there maybe six, seven months. So let me give you details. 
the person that brought me to the church was the one that was trying to get me to leave the church. Holy Ghost filled, can pray. I've seen her pray, seen her cast out demons, seen her do it all. They even went to the pastor and said some stuff about me that I don't know if he even knew I knew, but they were trying to get me out of the church even through him. They were telling me, you can start your own church. You can be a pastor of another church. They had gifts, but they saw what other people saw in me. Cindy's been calling me junior pastor since day one. Day one. So they saw it in me, but it wasn't the right time. And they were, should I believe the people who brought me to the church? Are these the ones that brought me in the church, that prayed for me, that got me there? You see how that happened? Satan disguised as angels of light. Now, what if I had a left? Think about it. What if I had a left? Then the church wouldn't have got fixed. I would have missed out some blessings. I would not have married my wife. I would have lost my mother and my father in Christ. I would have lost more than I would have ever gained because I would have went off of what God had for me. If God is your comforter, your wonderful counselor, then who are you seeking for counsel? Who are, who's comforting you? Because the day I was going to leave the church, that day I was going to leave the church, I asked God in my truck, in the front of the side of the church, in tears, saying, Lord, you need to answer me today. I need an answer today. I can say, this is it. I'm going to leave. Because I'm listening to the devil, because the devil wanted me to leave. Now, as soon as I get out of my vehicle, there's a man walking across the street. He comes over and he said, do you go to that church? And I said, yes, sir. He said, don't you leave that church. That's a good church. That's a God thing. How does that man know what I was even thinking or what I was even asking by God? That's a miracle in itself. You don't make a move until God tells you to move. He'll make it clear to you. That was clear to me. And since that day, I never even thought about leaving that church. Because I don't move until God tells me to move. He made it clear. I'm, if he made it that clear to me once, he'll do it again. And he made it clear because I'm here. So, you can be tied to an individual. You can be tied to a church. Your blessing can be missed with disobedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I said it this morning. The sacrifice has already been done. He's already been up on the cross. The sacrifice is it. You can't keep putting him up there. All he's requiring is obedience. And it's not obedience to man, it's obedience to God. It has nothing to do with man. It's not a man thing, this is a God thing. You know, they'll tell you, oh, I, I hate, I hate your ways, but I love you. Well, you might as well say, I hate, I hate to love you. <laughs> God takes the good with the bad and the ugly. You know, we know, we know that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord who would, who've been called according to his purpose. Now, it's God's purpose working in your life. Joseph had a purpose. But Joseph had to go through some things. Joseph had to be molded. You're the clay. The pot is up there. <laughs> you have a purpose. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy Lord said, but you should have life more abundantly. All you have to do is submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he has to flee from you. There is a hidden treasure in you. At this time, I don't know what it is, but it's something about you. This is the message the Lord gave me. So I, <laughs> I don't know no other way to say it. There is something special about you. 
He's planted your feet by the living water in order for you to grow. You have to be in the word or you can grow. How can a man hear if he, you know, you need a preacher? How can he, how can he uh, know who he has not uh, heard of or spoke of? You know, it's, it's clear. It doesn't matter who don't like you. God loves you. John 18, 20 says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. 19 tells you, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of this world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my words, they will keep your words. But you have to speak the word. <laughs> when you say, get thee behind me, Satan. Because you have to know your healing is only a dream away. Your prosperity is only a word away. I'm coming out of this turmoil. This is my season. There is a season and a time and every purpose under heaven. My mind shall be renewed. My spirit shall be rejuvenated. I shall reap what I have sown. Joseph became a blessing because whatever he had to do, his own family turned against him. But God stayed with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Whatever you do, do it from the heart. For the Lord, not for the people. Amen. Amen. That's my word for the day that he's given me to give you. You know, I, I'm praying that we grow and we prosper, but I need everybody to be in unity and on one accord for this to work. You know, I'm just saying what he told, told me to tell you. It's not a, it's not a man thing. It's a God thing. And when you realize that, you'll see God moving through this place. You'll see, you'll see healing come to this place. You'll see prosperity come to this place. Things will start coming. Miracles. <clears throat> Miracles will start coming. All we have to do is just be obedient to the word. And I believe the word. Hello. Thank you for listening to this resource. If you would like to receive our audio DVD catalog, or desire more information about our ministry, you may write to us at P.O. Box 612-822, San Jose, California, 95161-2822. Or you may request information via our website at www.sjwoffcc.org. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.